This time on Rad Rat Video, we are playing what's legitimately the worst thing I've ever played, Skateboard Madness Extreme Edition. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel where I cover all kinds of different skateboarding topics. You can learn all kinds of new things about skateboarding every week here if you subscribe on the channel. One thing I like to do is torture myself with interesting and obscure old skateboarding games including this one, which is called the Skateboard Madness Extreme Edition. Does that mean there was a normal edition as well? No, this is just what the game is called. This was a PAL exclusive game, meaning it only came out in the European region, which is good because this is a plague that really needed to be contained as much as possible. Um, this game is just shockingly bad, but let's see what we can learn from the cover. On the front, you see a stink bug indie, which is a trick you can't even do in the game, but this looks like it's just one of the developer's 14-year-old sons or something like that. Um, I don't know why they couldn't have just used a stock image that looked a little bit better than that, but that's what they got. Let's take a look at the back cover. This is what it says. Ever dreamed of traveling the globe's greatest skateboarding events? Can you pull off the most amazing and daredevil tricks? This thing just screams quality, doesn't it? It was made by a company called the Phoenix Games Group, which was only around from 2003 to 2009. They specialize in making like rip-off junk games really cheaply. In fact, this is a quote from their old website. We boast the shortest time required from development to product release in the industry. Ordinarily, the average development period for a game is 18 months, whereas Phoenix need a mere three to five months. And they sold them in places such as 24 stores, news agents, garage shops, etc. Marketing the ranges through these diverse outlets means they will get high exposure and this will result in high sales levels. Although the ranges will be sold at low retail prices, they will not be short on quality. Okay, so that was just a mess of English. I don't really know what a lot of that meant. Uh, it was kind of nonsense. I think they mean games when they say ranges. Like I don't, I don't know. But anyway, I think the point of it is they make games really, really quickly for next to no money, and then they sell them in, you know, convenience stores and 7-Elevens and stuff like that where people will see them. It's not necessarily like a game that's released in game stores. They just try to get it out in front of people. But it doesn't suffer on quality, apparently. Uh, we'll see about that. So when I first saw this game and I looked at the graphics and everything, I was trying to figure out when this came out. It's on the PlayStation 2, um, but it looks really early for the PS2, even though it was made quickly. Something in, you know, maybe like 2002 or something like that. But I looked it up, and on the back cover it even says, this game was released in 2007. This is after the PS3 and the Xbox 360 were out. Um, this is after Tony Hawk's Proving Ground came out. This is a little bit before Skate. There was probably already like trailers and stuff for Skate coming out. And this is what we got instead. Uh, at least what they got in Europe. Um, it is just abysmal. And let's take a look at it. When I first fired this game up, I was pretty sure it didn't work. I'm playing this on an emulator because the game is PAL only and it wouldn't run on my system, but it doesn't seem like you can do anything. If you skate around and do left or right in square, he does this. It's kind of a heel flip, I guess, if you want to call it that. You can't bail it, but it also doesn't give you any points. There are no grabs and you can't spin on street. Sometimes you randomly spin on vert, but you have almost no control and you almost certainly bail. If you do a grind with circle, it just says slide, and it sounds like this. So clearly this game is just not playing right. Or is it? I looked up more gameplay of the game on YouTube, and that's the experience that other people are having too. I tried to find the manual online to see if there are more tricks, and I found one page, but only in Spanish. But yeah, it looks like it was running correctly. There's only one grind, which is what this is explaining. There are kick flips and heel flips, and then seven grabs that only work in Rampa. But it's got all the classics, you know, skywalks, back grabs, foot throws, <laughs> and then nose grabs and crossbones, which are the same. Except you can't hold a nose grab, but you can hold a crossbone for whatever reason. So the game is running as designed. It was just designed broken. We'll talk about the tricks a little bit more in a minute, but there are a couple of other modes that we have to look at first. This is the street race mode. Yeah, there's no sound when you start. No countdown, no rolling sound even for a minute. Eventually that will start. I don't know if it loads slower than the level or if it needs to wait for something to trigger it. I have no clue. So you've got to skate around the level and collect arrows in order. That's it. 
It shows you where the next one is, which is nice. They could have just left you to look around for it blindly, but the controls here are really hard to explain. First of all, your ollie is pathetic. You get an inch off the ground unless you hold down X for a while. That's fairly normal, I guess, but it doesn't work normally. If you're crouched down and you hit something, you'll stop crouching. So you are holding the button down, ready to release and get a big ollie, but it doesn't do anything because your character isn't crouching. So that's helpful. Wait, is he mongoing? Uh, actually, I, I don't think so. It, it just looks terrible. And by the way, when you bail, you lose control for a second or so before you're allowed to move again. In the first level, this race was super easy. I finished it with a minute left, and this despite never actually being able to land a vert air. Sometimes you just start spinning. I never figured out exactly how this works. It seems related to the angle you left the coping at. You don't actually cover distance in the air. If you approach at an angle, you'll just be launched straight up, but you'll spin. Holding left or right can speed up or slow down your spin, but it's very touchy and weird. If you start spinning, it's pretty much pure luck if you'll roll away or not. Being able to cover distance would have made it a lot easier to collect stuff, and it took a while to get used to just doing perfectly straight airs. It's a lot harder to aim that way. You have to land perfectly straight on airs too. When you start playing, you'll bail so often that you might think Vert is broken, but eventually you'll get used to lining yourself up perfectly straight and you'll be okay most of the time. But I did run into a problem that I'll be having throughout the game. The route it wants you to take is sometimes impossible. There's a double set in the first level that you can't easily get up, Thankfully, you can ollie each set in this level. It's just awkward, not impossible, but we'll get to impossible. This is the second level. At first glance, it's not bad. There are a lot of ramps and stuff around that might potentially be fun in high score mode. Spoiler, they're not. But once you get down to business, you realize how screwed you are. This is the hardest stage in the whole game, but I think it's on accident. Is this some kind of radioactive goo that will turn me into a ninja turtle if I fall in? I actually avoided it for a while before I realized it was just supposed to be grass. Anyway, there's a big stair set all around the level, and the path for all the arrows takes you up and down them over and over. The problem is that you can't get up the stairs in any easy way. You can't ollie high enough to clear them. You would, of course, think you can grind up the handrails. That's what you would do in Tony Hawk, or in recent years, you might even do it in real life. But these aren't grindable at all. You can't grind up the rail in the first level either. Later, I tried to grind down the rail, and that didn't work either. I think they just forgot to turn these on as grindable objects, but the level is clearly designed for you to do that. So what do you do? You can ride all the way around the level to try to find a ramp, then ride over to collect the arrow. That works, but you have to do it so many times during this route that you'll definitely run out of time. I was pretty stumped on this one for a while. You can't grind the stairs and transfer up a step at a time. You can't ollie out of a grind at an angle at all. So what did I do? Couldn't let the game defeat me here. So I started over. Of course, it starts you facing the wrong way because it hates you. So I turned around it and, and this happened. The camera has flipped over. Hitting vert will straighten you out for a while, but it kept happening until I restarted the game. This game is legitimately making me feel sick. I'm not sure what it was. I have some trouble with first person games, but usually this type of game would be fine for motion sickness. Maybe I just want to puke because of realizing that my life led me to a point where I play games like this in my free time. Back to those stairs though. I figured out that ollieing at an angle will let me clear a couple and then I can turn into the next one. Ollie a couple times, eventually work my way up. That's harder than it sounds though. If you run out of space, you have to turn around carefully, not fall back down. It takes forever. Well, it's still a lot less time than riding all the way around the level and finding a ramp. After quite a few attempts, I got good enough at it to get through. The third level is a business plaza area. It looks a little bit different from the other ones, and this level is huge. There are three different skate parks throughout this level. It could be really tough to get all 53 of the arrows. Luckily, I'm amazing at this game now, and I managed to get through this one on the first try. The next level is a tiny skate park, and you have a couple of minutes to get them all. I bailed a lot, and I still got through this one first try. I think that second level should definitely have been the last one because it was 10 times harder than this. The final level is an indoor skate park. This one actually took me two tries because I got lost and ended up running out of time. Again, the layout of this level doesn't look too terrible either. I could see trying to do some combos here, like grinding on a handrail and landing on a box or something like that, but that's not gonna happen. Okay, the next mode is collector mode. Collector with an E. This game is European, and I know that British people are spelling impaired, but I double checked, and yeah, this is still wrong there too. In this mode, you just collect floating skateboards. You don't have to do it in order though, and this mode is a lot harder. The first level actually gave me a lot of challenge. Coming up with your own route and executing it perfectly is kind of tough. 
Especially with the stairs in this level, they weren't as bad as the second level, but the timing is super tight on this one. I had a lot of close calls. Sure, playing it feels terrible, but <laughs> there was this tiny spike of excitement when I finally beat it. It almost felt like a video game for a minute. The second level was hard too. The stairs are a lot less of a problem because you don't have to go up and down it a bunch of times, maybe only once or twice. But this level is huge, especially for a PS1 game, so it's easy to get lost or miss something. Wait, what? You said, oh, oh yeah, that's right. This is a PS2 game. Never mind, this is garbage. Wait, why is there a pyramid in the middle of a bowl? Eh, whatever. So, <laughs> this one is tough, but it only took a few tries. It's just that every attempt is four minutes and then a minute of loading, so you can be playing for a half hour and only get a few runs in. Let's move to the third level. This one is even bigger, but just not in the way you want it to be. There are these separate skate parks and they're linked together by long paths. You'll get to the second one within the time allotment pretty easily, but here's what it takes to get to the last one. You skate around to the entrance to the park. I try to save some time by cutting through the grass. Whoops, there's an invisible vert ramp here. I think the game counts any vertical surface as a ramp. There are times you'll hit a curb and just fly through the air or sometimes through the ground. After that, you skate all the way up and around this path. By the way, this is in no way how you're supposed to notate time. Is this a weird Euro thing? I don't think so, it's just wrong for no reason. Then you go all the way down this other path to get to the last park. Thankfully you can grind up this handrail, unlike all the other ones. Not sure what led me to even try that. But after a few attempts I managed to get through this one too. And level 4 is basically impossible. You have exactly one minute. There's zero room for mistakes here. You have to hit every ramp perfectly, which is tough. There's a bank that doesn't send you up vertical so you can slow down and turn in the air which saves a fraction of a second. This quarter pipe over here can actually be aired out of if you ollie part way up. It's really, really hard and you have to do it perfectly, but it helps if you can do it. Some of these on the rails are really tough to get to too. This one was brutal. I came really close on this one a bunch of times, like here, where I was one off and it was on screen when I ran out of time. But I really wanted to beat this level because there's only one more stage at the end. Whether I beat that one or not, I could at least show you every single event in the whole game. So I stuck to it for a while. I got my route figured out and I started getting pretty close, but when I... What? I have never gotten a system error on the PS2 before. Sure, this is in an emulator, but look at this. Skin 6.bmp texture failed. Somehow this isn't an emulator error, this is from the PS2. Who knows if this would happen on an actual system. It probably does though. I almost took this as a good reason to stop playing, but I persevered because I crave pain and misery. And after loading, I got it within about 10 more minutes. By the way, there's no restart option. You can only quit to the menu and sit through a loading screen. This could have taken half the time if I could restart when I make a mistake. Okay, on to the next level. This one was pretty easy, it only took one try. Isn't that ridiculous? Level 4 is frame perfect in difficulty, but the final level has no challenge whatsoever. Speaking of no challenge whatsoever, let's take a look at the high score mode. This is incredibly pointless. The time limit is 10 minutes. It doesn't end when you reach the score, which you'll do in a couple of minutes. I beat the final level in a couple minutes and just left the game running to make lunch while I waited to see what the ending screen would say. I'll show you that later. But the actual trick scoring makes zero sense whatsoever. As I mentioned, you can do kick and heel flips on flat, but they don't count. You don't see a score come up unless you do another trick later. So if you just do a kickflip and then a grind, it will count the kickflip then? It's not a combo, it's just broken. And the grind meter is a physical object in the world. So if you grind downhill, it actually moves off camera, which is pretty cool. Thanks for that. The balance meter doesn't get harder the longer you grind. You can basically grind forever. If there is a long enough ledge, you'll randomly get kicked off at some point though. Okay, so how do you actually get points then? On vert, you have to do grabs like the famous skywalk. Why not just say airwalk? The only excuse I could think of is if the developers looked up the real names in some other language and then translated them to English, but that doesn't explain the foot throw. <laughs> I don't know. The points work like this. Do an air trick and it counts for a set amount of points. It doesn't matter if you hold the grab or not and it doesn't matter if you do the same trick over and over. But the problem is that some tricks still won't count even on vert. But then you might get them later in the next air, like it saves them up and then you get points in a burst. Except if you bail after a missed air, then you lose a the trick that didn't count yet. Maybe this is why they give you 10 minutes. No matter how many airs you get zero points for, you'll still have tons of time. But the fact that only vert works is absolutely tragic. If they gave me three or four flip tricks and a couple of grinds, 
there would be a reason for all these skate parks. You could grind stuff like the handrails and hubbas. You could maybe grind a bench and flip over to the next bench. It wouldn't be fun, but it would be a game. Really just enable the grab tricks on street and it would be much better. But considering how easy this game was, I had a lot of extra time to screw around. One thing I wanted to learn was if it was possible to land fakie. If you do an air to fakie on vert, you just roll away regular. But you can't spin on street, you can only turn. So what if you turn 180? I tried this a bunch of times, you usually bail. You can't do it over a hip and under rotate to match that. You have to do it all the way around and land straight. It's not easy, but check this out. Boom, you teleport back to facing forward. And of course, it isn't worth any points. But this is the kind of stuff you do when you have six or seven minutes of gameplay to kill. I also discovered that this ledge is only grindable part way for no good reason. It just stops acting like a grindable ledge. Cool. So yeah, you'll get through these easily. I finally beat the last level. What do I get? Does it congratulate me or give me a bonus level or a cheat code or something like that? Nah. It says, new level unlocked, new high score, level completed. This is what it says on every level. There is no new level to unlock. But I didn't know that until I paused the recording and looked close because it's black text while the screen is fading to black. And then you're just kicked out to the menu. Congratulations, idiot. Thanks for your $20. Okay, so I don't know exactly what this game costs to make, but there are some expenses going into making a game. Pressing the discs and getting everything printed and manufactured and shipped out. I would imagine it was probably like 20 bucks, maybe 15, um, but I don't really know for sure. It's really hard to find information on these guys. It's not like anyone was a major fan of their games and they are filling up forums with information about them and stuff like that. Uh, like everyone who got this stuff hated it and it should have been obvious because i found a list of some of the other games they made and just take a look at some of these masterpieces dalmatians 3 rip off of 101 dalmatians packy rip off of pac-man snow white and the seven clever boys rip off of snow white and the seven dwarves legend of hercules rip off of hercules mighty mulan rip off of mulan son of the lion king rip off of the lion king so yeah, this game was designed from the beginning to just be a cash grab. It was designed to suck. It was designed to be picked up off the shelf by somebody in a, at the checkout counter and just decide to throw a couple bucks at. It was meant to be terrible, and it definitely was. The thing I can picture now is like a kid who wanted the latest Tony Hawk game, um, and his mom gave him this instead, and they still don't talk to this day. Like this thing was a tragedy on the gaming world and on skateboarders um, entirely. I'm glad it was contained to Europe and it didn't ruin skateboarding itself somehow. But man, this one is just awful and is so far the worst game I've played. Even up there with uh, Rocket Power and Goofy Skateboarding and stuff like that, this game is still one of the worst. So um, my next game will hopefully be a little bit better. I do have some leads and other stuff I have to play that don't look quite as terrible as this, but I had to get it out of the way. I played this for like four or five hours to get through it and I need a vacation. So um, that's it for now. Stay tuned and make sure you subscribe so you can check out the next video when it comes out. Also, YouTube will recommend some videos for you right there and hit the like button if you like this video. If not, hit it anyway and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.